A Chinese submarine lurks below the waters of the Indian Ocean. Suddenly, an explosion rocks the vessel. An anti-submarine torpedo has struck the stern. Water begins rushing in as compartments are sealed. The Chinese crew blows the ballasts. They need to surface now, or the submarine will sink to the ocean floor, crushing all who are inside. The torpedo was launched from the newly deployed Indian Anti-Submarine Warfare Shallow Watercraft Corvette. It's been tracking the Chinese intruder for several hours. The sub sends an emergency message for help back to China as it breaks the surface. The People's Navy deploys to the region. As it passes through the Malacca Strait, Indian destroyers, frigates, and aircraft carriers lie in wait at several choke points. The vessels unload their cannons, missiles, and torpedoes. The trapped Chinese ships are decimated. This hypothetical scenario may happen in the future, and it might be closer than you think. But thanks to one specific set of islands, India might have the advantage if China ever tries to expand its influence further into the Indian Ocean. The chain known as the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are in one of the most strategically significant locations in the world. This bit of land may hold the key to balancing the powers rising in South and East Asia. For decades, India has been slowly militarizing the island chain. But progress has been slow. That all might change in the coming years, as China tries to expand its influence further south and west. India is feeling the pressure both economically and to their national security. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are their best chance of securing the waters along India's coastline while monitoring the shipping routes that much of the traffic in the region uses. This includes Chinese vessels, which is why these Indian islands have Beijing very worried. It probably goes without saying that India and China don't have the best relationship. There are constant clashes between the troops along their borders in the Himalayas, as there's never been an agreement over exactly where India ends and Chinese-controlled Tibet begins. Conflict between the two nations is only exacerbated by both governments trying to boost their economies while becoming more influential on a global scale. It's these two nations who are fighting for supremacy in East and Southeast Asia as they grow in strength. However, in terms of global economic power, the waterways between China and India are key. Both countries have formidable armies and navies, but for China, it's imperative that they have access to the Indian Ocean for several reasons. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands could really put a damper on China's plans for the future. The key here is to remember that whoever controls the Malacca Strait controls the main waterway that ships use to move goods and supplies between the Indian Ocean and East Asia. This includes goods from Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Europe. Right now, India is in a position to be the dominant player in controlling the area, thanks to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Let's look at the history, importance, and strategic significance of the islands. As we dive deeper into this region of the world, it'll become glaringly clear why China is so terrified that India is increasing the militarization of the Andaman and Nicobar chain. It's very possible that what India does in the coming year could directly impact China's ability to spread its influence in the region. In a worst-case scenario, these islands might be ground zero for an all-out conflict between India and China. The island chain itself is 22 nautical miles from Myanmar and only 90 miles from Indonesia. This allows India's navy and aircraft to have quick and easy access to not only the Bay of Bengal, but the 6-degree and 10-degree channels, through which around 60,000 vessels pass each year. The importance of this region cannot be overstated, as Chinese trading ships require access to these waters, otherwise a large part of their trade network would come screeching to a halt. To put it into perspective, China receives around three-quarters of all of its oil from trade routes running through the Indian Ocean. If they were to lose access to these shipping lanes, it would be devastating for their economy and infrastructure. If we go back in time, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands have always been a strategically important location. Chinese Buddhist monks of the 7th century, Arab travelers hundreds of years ago, and even Marco Polo visited the islands. This is because they serve as a vital stopping point while traveling through the waters connecting the Indian and Pacific Oceans. When the British colonized India, they turned the Andaman Islands into a penal colony. The use by the British pushed indigenous communities out and eventually led to the establishment of Port Blair, which now contains a naval base and airfield. When India gained its independence in 1947, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands were officially incorporated into their borders. Over the years, the islands have developed into a popular tourist destination for people in the region. However, it's not the growing tourism industry that China is worried about, it's the growing military presence that concerns them. Over the last couple of decades, China has been increasingly trying to expand its influence in the Indian Ocean. They've deployed expeditionary naval forces, conducted arms sales, and made strategic connections with other nations throughout the region. This obviously worried India, which then forced the government to seek out ways to bring Chinese expansion to a stop or at least slow it down. It quickly became apparent that the Andaman and Nicobar Islands could be the answer to India's problems. Its location allows for the monitoring of the different waterways in the region along with large areas of the mainland. 
China's used the guise of anti-piracy operations to send submarines and naval vessels into the waters off the coast of India. They've also established bases in places like Gwadar and Djibouti to increase their military presence in the Indian Ocean, but China's been expanding its naval operations closer to India's borders as well. For example, Chinese naval and survey vessels have been sighted in the Andaman Sea, the Bay of Bengal, and even in India's exclusive economic zone. It's clear that China is becoming more aggressive in its actions in the South China Sea along with parts of South Asia. They constructed artificial islands where they deployed military personnel and assets, and this has been a huge cause of concern for nations like Taiwan. But there's also a real concern that the militarization of the South China Sea could cause irreparable harm to the freedom of navigation rules in the Indo-Pacific region. This open trade agreement is vital to maintaining peace and political stability in the area. India has been keeping a close eye on China's actions in the South China Sea and is planning for a future where China starts expanding into the Andaman Sea or the Bay of Bengal. China is already engaged in illegal and unregulated fishing practices in the areas, which is a resource vital to India and other countries in the region that border the ocean. For years, China has been pushing its luck to see how much it can get away with. India has become fed up and is starting to take more drastic actions by using the Andaman and Nicobar Islands to strengthen their position and keep China in check. The increase of military assets being deployed to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands is taking their time. More naval ships and personnel are deployed on the islands every year in preparation for a more aggressive stance in the waters of the region. At Point Blair, the small military base is being reimagined as an intelligence hub where aircraft, ships, and communication airways can set up to gather more intel about China's military movements. This strategic listening post will provide India with the upper hand in the region, especially if they need to take naval action, which is obviously a cause of concern for China. As the Andaman and Nicobar Islands become more of a military asset to India, China's ability to push the boundaries of where their ships and aircraft can go without repercussions diminishes. In the future, the intelligence gathered by radar and listening posts on the islands could inform not just the Indian military but other nations who might also have interests to protect in the region, such as Australia, Japan, and even the US. But with the ability to gather more intelligence, India also needs to be able to control what's happening in the area. One key aspect of this is promoting the island chain as an economic hub and port for trade ships. This is why India has plans to build a major port at Great Nicobar Island that's estimated to cost $1.5 billion. And for China, any country that poses a threat to its economic might is a country that they will look to punish. If India is successful in creating a major transshipment port on the Andaman and Nicobar Island chain, Chinese ships will likely need to utilize it to maintain certain trade agreements. Since India is already battling an economic war to secure jobs, resources, and manufacturing contracts with China, the leadership of the People's Republic is probably less than thrilled that they might have to use Indian-controlled ports in the future. If India can entice the international community to use their ports in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, it could allow them to gain a substantial piece of the enormous amount of trade that's done with China. This will also allow India and the countries they're close to to control supply chains, which might allow sanctions on China to be more easily enforced. The repercussions of this reality could be disastrous for the Chinese economy. China is likely extremely worried about how India's ports in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands will affect their ability to procure resources from Africa and Europe. But there's also another issue for China if the islands become a mainstream stop for vessels passing through the region. Southeast Asian nations such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore rely heavily on Chinese goods. However, if there's easier access to global markets, they might start trading with other parts of the world. No matter how China looks at it, if the Andaman and Nicobar Islands become economic and shipment hubs, their own trade network could be put into jeopardy. And if all of this wasn't enough, now the quadrilateral security dialogue between Australia, India, Japan, and the United States has resulted in military exercises being conducted near the islands. These exercises are identifying shortcomings in India's ability to successfully protect its waterways and allowing for future plans to defend and control all major channels running through the region to be more effective. However, a big problem is becoming increasingly clear to India as it tries to strengthen its position, and China is almost certainly aware of it. When comparing India's naval capability with China, there's a huge gap. China has the largest navy in the world, and we all know from the war in Ukraine, having more military vessels does not necessarily mean a nation will be able to win a war. However, numbers are definitely on China's side at the moment. According to estimates, China has around 730 naval vessels, while India has about 295. Both countries have two aircraft carriers, but India is vastly outnumbered in every other type of naval vessel. 
China has 50 destroyers, 43 frigates, 72 corvettes, and 78 submarines. India, on the other hand, has 11 destroyers, 12 frigates, 19 corvettes, and 18 submarines. You can see the massive disparity between the two forces, but, and this is a big but, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands could help negate the differences in numbers due to its strategic location. Even if a large Chinese fleet was able to traverse the Malacca Strait, India would still have several choke points around the islands that could be used to counteract the numbers of China's navy. If the Chinese navy was drawn too close to the islands, India could launch missiles, rockets, and artillery from the shoreline to cause massive damage. On top of this, if China becomes too aggressive, the joint missions being conducted as a result of the quadrilateral security dialogue means that India will likely receive some help from one or all of the nations that they conduct exercises with. In recent years, China has been using one of their favorite tactics to try to gain the upper hand in the waters around India. Misdirection and straight-up lies are employed to draw attention away from what they're really doing. When India started deploying more ships and military personnel to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, China deployed submarines to the area. This was done to gather information, but when China was caught in Indian waters, they claimed ignorance and said that the misplaced submarine had nothing to do with India's deployment of military assets to Andaman and Nicobar. The Chinese Defense Ministry also said that the People's Liberation Army often cooperates with other militaries in the region, including India, which only added positive factors for regional peace and stability. What China was really doing was responding to India's naval deployment in the Andaman Sea. And when they got caught, Chinese leadership made up some BS to try and distract from the fact that they were in India's territory. This has happened time and time again, such as in the waters around Taiwan, the Himalayan border with India, and anywhere else China has a military presence. These operations are called gray zone tactics, in which China uses disruptive measures and aggression that doesn't result in war, but is not appropriate during peacetime either. Naval incursions into Indian territory, the setting up of naval bases in the Indian Ocean, and conflicts along the Himalayan border are all gray zone initiatives that China is using to weaken or threaten India. To counteract China's constant encroachments and desire to expand its influence into the Indian Ocean, a new set of airstrips is being built into the northern and southern islands of Andaman and Nicobar. Indian defense officials say that these airfields will serve two purposes. The first is to extend their ability to conduct long-range aerial surveillance. In this aspect, India's plan is to gather as much intel as possible to keep China in check and allow for a fast deployment if things begin to escalate. One example of this is the procurement and increased use of the Boeing P-8I, which has been flown out of Port Blair to conduct anti-submarine surveillance in the surrounding waters. This not only acts as a deterrent, but if it comes down to it, the P-8I could destroy an enemy vessel if needed. This transitions us into the second reason why runways are being built and extended on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These new extended airfields are being built for national defense as well. Like the naval presence around the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, having aircraft will greatly strengthen India's strategic capabilities in the surrounding area. India currently has hundreds of Soviet-era fighters that can still be deadly if used properly. These aircraft include the Sukhoi Su-30 and the MiG-21s. However, it's the much more modern Hal Tejas designed and constructed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited that could pose a real threat to Chinese forces operating in the region. Having the ability to mount a naval and aerial defense will be vital to the future if India needs to protect the entrance to the Andaman Sea, Bay of Bengal, or waters of the Indian Ocean. Most of the naval vessels currently stationed at the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are patrol boats and frontline warships. India is not trying to create a conflict, but it knows that the nation needs to be ready if China does become more aggressive. The more intel they have on what's going on in the waters they control, the better their forces will be able to react to hostilities. And although there are no current plans to build submarine bases on the islands, this might change in the future. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has implemented aggressive plans to update and improve India's infrastructure while earmarking around $750 million to also improve the capabilities of the Andaman and Nicobar Command, the only tri-service theater command in the Indian Armed Forces. What all this means is that India is taking the Chinese threat very seriously. They are actively dedicating money and resources to plans to disrupt Chinese expansion into the Indian Ocean. The stronger Indian forces become on and around the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the more difficult it'll be for China to gain control of the waters of South Asia. China wants to become the sole dominant power in the region, and right now India is one of the main obstacles standing in their way. But things aren't going perfectly for India either. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands may be one of the most important island chains in the region, but maintaining infrastructure there can be incredibly difficult for a variety of reasons. 
One challenge the Indian government has faced has come from environmentalists who want to protect the islands from development. For several years, the military wanted to construct a radar station on Narcondam Island. It's here that the endangered species of bird called the Narcondam Island hornbill lives. For years, the environmentalists successfully pleaded their case and ensured the hornbill's habitat was protected. However, when Prime Minister Modi was elected, he dismissed the concerns and ordered the radar station built anyway. A similar scenario unfolded on the Cocoa Islands, where even though environmentalists advocated for the protection of the island's habitat, new radar stations were built anyway to allow India to keep an eye on Chinese military bases in Myanmar. Of the 572 islands in the Andaman and Nicobar chain, only 37 are inhabited. This has led to many of the uninhabited islands being used for narcotic smuggling and unsanctioned stopping points for foreign boats. The hundreds of uninhabited islands could pose a threat to the military assets that India set up in the region and the nation's security. This has become such a major concern for military strategists that they've suggested the government encourage people to relocate to the uninhabited islands to help track vessels and deter illegal activity. And even though the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are extremely important, the Indian government has dragged its feet in terms of infrastructure development. It's reported that an undersea cable link between the mainland and the islands has remained unfinished for years, and that internet connectivity, even at the naval base at Port Blair, is spotty at best. The islands also experience intense weather annually, with cyclones sweeping across the region. These storms have caused damage to roads, bridges, and airfields, many of which are never repaired. Heavy rains for six months out of the year, stall construction projects, and the distance between the islands and the mainland means it's expensive to ship the materials needed to build and repair infrastructure. And the military is certainly not immune to these problems. Even though India is rapidly trying to ramp up the number of ships, aircraft, and soldiers on the islands, there are a lot of barriers standing in the way. China's most likely been keeping a close eye on the situation in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and knowing just how vital the location is, the struggle to militarize the islands has given China hope. It's very likely that China does not want to go to war with India. No matter who won, an all-out war between the two nations would be catastrophic. Therefore, China is happy to continue using gray zone tactics and its economic and naval power to extend its influence in the region. Even though there's still a long way to go for India to properly fortify their position in the region, eventually the Andaman and Nicobar Islands will play a significant role in controlling the shipping lanes and waterways between the South China Sea and the Andaman Sea. This is a terrifying thought for China, as they do not want anything restricting the movements of their trade and military vessels. There is little doubt that China will continue to extend its power and influence throughout East and Southeast Asia. India's plans for the Andaman and Nicobar Islands may be the only thing standing in their way. Now watch India's World War III plan, or check out India vs China, who would win? Army-Military Comparison.